One of the greatest fashion designers of all time, Yves Saint Laurent created fashion for the new, empowered and liberated woman of the second half of the 20th century, expressing her strength and sensuality. A man who broke taboos and pushed the fashion industry forward. Welcome to Fashion History Sessions. Yves Saint Laurent was born in Oran, Algeria on the 1st of August of 1936. He was the eldest child of Lucienne and Charles Mathieu Saint Laurent. Charles was a handsome businessman who ran an insurance company and managed cinemas in Algeria, Tunisia and Morocco. Yves grew up in a loving family surrounded by women. His two younger sisters, Michelle and Brigitte, his maternal grandmother, Madame Marianne Wilbeau, and great-aunt Renée. The family lived in a comfortable three-story house in Oran and spent summers in France. Abe's mother was a very elegant and stylish woman. She encouraged her son's artistic talent. Eves, on the other hand, would observe his mother's elegance, her dressing and taste, which would pave the way for the development of his aesthetic sense. Madame Saint Laurent would take her son to purchase magazines like Vogue, where Eve could see a world of dream and style. In May 1950, a teenage Yves Saint Laurent went to the Municipal Opera House in Oran. He was mesmerized by the costumes of the production, which he later would describe as the most extraordinary experience I've ever had. Yves started to think that costume design could be his career. Soon he would create entire shows with sets, designing and costumes for his family to watch. This was Yves' happy world, far removed from the daily ordeal of the Catholic school, where he was bitten and bullied by other boys for being so different from them. Yves immersed himself into the collections of French couturiers, like Dior, Balenciaga and Givenchy, creating his own collections using paper dolls. Eventually, he started to design clothes for his mother that she would have made by a seamstress. In the autumn of 1953, Yves Saint Laurent goes to Paris, accompanied by his mother to participate in the International Wool Secretariat Fashion Competition. Yves is introduced to Michel de Brunoff, the editor of Vogue in Paris. Brunoff suggests Yves should enroll in the École de la Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture Parisienne after he finished his school exams. In the following year, aged 18, Yves moves to Paris and wins first prize for his designs in the same competition. A black wool cocktail dress was then made in Hubert de Givenchy's atelier. Later, Yves would meet Michel de Brunoff again at Vogue to show him his 50 original sketches. The original Vogue editor saw many similarities to Christian Dior's work and arranged a meeting between the two. By June 1955, Yves Saint Laurent is working with his idol. Yves Saint Laurent arrives at the House of Dior eight years after the great success of the new look. Christian Dior was one of the most, if not the most, acclaimed Paris couturier of that moment. Soon Yves is promoted to assistant with, along with Marc Bowen. And not long after, ascends to the role of principal associate working directly with Monsieur Dior. Christian Dior starts to include Saint Laurent's designs in his collections in the autumn of the same year. In 1957, two years later, Dior is celebrating a decade of success. Saint Laurent is now a fundamental contributor for the collections of the prestigious fashion house. Upon visiting the Maison Dior, Madame Saint Laurent has a conversation with Monsieur Dior who tells her that he had chosen Yves as his successor. Later in the same year, Christian Dior dies, leaving his helm of the fashion house in the hands of 21 years old Yves Saint Laurent. On the 15th of November 1957, Saint Laurent was announced as the new couturier in charge of the House of Dior. In the following weeks, he completed 600 sketches for a new collection, later streamed down to 178 looks. This would be the first Saint Laurent solo collection for Dior that was showed in January 1958, called Trapeze. 
Unlike the stiff and fitted silhouette of Christian Dior, this collection presented more fluid lines with a strong Balenciaga inspiration in the baby doll dress. Yves Saint Laurent brought a youthful look to Dior, more engaged with a young demographic in a changing society in which young people would take the lead and influence many aspects of life. A great example of these changes are the youth movements with groups of young people who dressed in a particular way, listened to a certain type of music and had a certain attitude. The Beatniks and Juliette Greco would influence Saint Laurent to create the Beat collection in 1960. Like the Beatniks dressed, this collection was entirely black, with motorcycle leather jackets, an alligator, mink coats and cashmere turtlenecks. Let's say it was beat chic. This collection concerned the owner of the House of Dior, who feared Dior's clientele would not appreciate street style in haute couture. In the same year of the beat collection, age 24, Saint Laurent is drafted to fight in the war in Algeria. The induction was too aggressive for him and he eventually collapsed. After a stay at the military hospital, Saint Laurent was transferred to a mental hospital in Paris, where he was exposed to violent electric shock treatment and sedated with psychoactive drugs. Saint Laurent's shyness could also reveal a certain melancholy. Throughout his life he had experienced episodes of depression. The treatment he was subjected at a hospital would forever scar him. A few weeks after his success with his first solo collection at Dior, Yves Saint Laurent met one of the most important people of his life, the 27 years old Pierre Berger. This friendship would last for the next 50 years. It was Pierre Berger who managed to get Saint Laurent out of the mental hospital. He was also discharged from the army due to his health. Thinking that Saint Laurent's style would not match Dior, and due to his deteriorating mental health, the owner of Dior decides to terminate Yves' contract with the Couture House and appointed Mark Bowen to replace him. With the support and business talent of Pierre Berger, Yves Saint Laurent sues Dior for breach of contract and starts looking for investors to create his own Couture House. Berger found the investor in the American millionaire J. Mark Robinson, Yves Saint Laurent House opened on the 4th of December 1961. The first collection was presented in January 1962. Many employees of the House of Dior moved to Yves Saint Laurent, including Anne-Marie Munoz, who would be a pivotal element of the team and who would work with the couturier for the next 40 years. Saint Laurent was now free to create collections that spoke about his universe and interests that would align with the modern and dynamic woman of the 1960s. Soon the world would see Le Caban coat, wide leg trousers, short evening dresses and trench coats as part of Saint Laurent's fashion language. As the 1960s progressed, fashion became more daring and youthful. Street style becomes the inspiration for fashion houses and the future becomes a recurrent theme. Mary Quant with a miniskirt and Courage with futuristic space outfits. Like Coco Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent introduces menswear into women's wear. Trousers, trench coats and the safari jackets were launched in 1967. One of the most unforgettable creations of Yves Saint Laurent was the smoking for women. Presented for the first time in 1966, le smoking was an alternative to the traditional evening gown. The creations of the 60s paved the way for a more liberated and often scandalous 1970s. Not every Yves Saint Laurent collection was a hit though, and the couturier also scandalized in a negative way with some of his work. The today known as the Scandal Collection was shown as the Liberation Collection in 1971. It was inspired in 1940s wartime. Both clients and press hated it. Revisiting occupied Paris was not something that the public was willing to do yet. One of the characteristics of Saint Laurent's work was the introduction of other cultures in his collections 
which today we can see in many other brands and sometimes even consider them cultural appropriation. Because he was born in Africa, Saint Laurent got a lot of inspiration from the continent. In the spring-summer collection of 1967, we could see beaded dresses decorated with raffia. The safari jacket was inspired by the gabardine uniforms of the troops in colonial Africa. The Russian folklore, inspired by the costumes of the Ballet Russe, also resulted in Saint Laurent's 1976 opéra Ballet Russe collection. Gypsy skirts, Cossack coats and a range of diverse colors created a relaxed and luxurious collection that was acclaimed by both the public and the press. Morocco would also inspire Saint Laurent with traditional Moroccan dresses, tunics, jalabas and harem pants. Art would be one of the greatest inspirations for Yves Saint Laurent. His Mondrian collection in 1965 was a great success. Saint Laurent had started to read a book about Mondrian gifted by his mother. His interest in op art and pop art of the mid-1960s inspired his collections in 1966, where we can see references to Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein and Tom Wesselman by turning their art creations into cocktail dresses. Many more artists would inspire Saint Laurent throughout his career, like Georges Braque, Vincent van Gogh and Pablo Picasso. The passion for art would not only remain on the catwalks. Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger lived surrounded by beautiful objects of art, creating an extraordinary art collection. By the mid-1960s, Yves Saint Laurent started to recognize that the fashion market was changing. The number of clients willing to pay for haute couture was declining. Saint Laurent was on a mission to bring his fashion to a wider audience without compromising the design and the quality. Following the footsteps of Madame Vionnet and Lucien Lelong, Saint Laurent decides to sell ready-to-wear, opening his first Rive Gauche boutique in September of 1966. This collection is aimed at daily life. In reality, this would become the norm in the fashion industry. The design of the Rive Gauche collections were similar in its themes to the haute couture ones, but more daring and free. Saint Laurent was catering to a younger audience that could not afford haute couture. This concept was a success, and Saint Laurent spread Rive Gauche boutiques through the most important capitals of the world. Through his life, Yves Saint Laurent had several breakdowns, suffered with addiction and depression. His relationship with Pierre Berger was affected by these events, but even then, they were life partners. Saint Laurent cultivated friendships with women that would not only be friends, but also muses, like Betty Catreau, Lulu de la Falaise, and Catherine Duneuve. He loved women and loved being surrounded by them. He once said, The most beautiful clothes a woman can wear are the arms of the man she loves. But for those who haven't got that fortune of finding this happiness, I am here. In 1983, Saint Laurent was the first living fashion designer to have his exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. In 2002, Saint Laurent retired and later that year created a foundation with Pierre Berger to document the history of his legendary couture house. Yves Saint Laurent died of brain cancer in 2008. It did not know how sick he was. His ashes were scattered in Marrakech, in the Majorelle Garden, his residence that he owned since 1980, returning to his natal north of Africa.